Butter Dog. Dog with butter. Yo, Jonathan here, and welcome to episode three of 50 Under 50. Hot waist jeans, I come in my ex cry. Hit me up like I'm still up for grabs, no reply. I'm a real go get it, keep my love for love side. Only thing on my mind is a bullseye. So today's video is sponsored by Adidas, which, not gonna lie, it's kind of amazing. A little bit of a fanboy. And with that, before we jump into things, I wanted to showcase the Gamer, which also happens to come in under 50 bucks. It's unique in the sense that it blends the physical fitness aspect of football, or soccer as us Americans might call it, with the digital connected gaming side as well. How it works is you first have the gamer insole, which you would first insert into your cleats. It then works in conjunction with this tiny compact Google powered jacquard tag that packs a ton of tech inside. There's a built-in gyroscope, an accelerometer, even a tiny processor that enables machine learning, which then can decipher soccer-specific movements. So you're able to track the number of kicks, how fast those kicks were, your top speed, and then the total distance you've run. Top running speed was, uh, was 18.9 kilometers per hour, which is about like 12 miles per hour. Um, says I kicked the ball 43 times, uh, but it does say that uh, this value is the total count of kicks you performed, um, including passes, crosses, and shots. Tapping the ball lightly with your foot will not be counted. Uh, so it doesn't count like all your touches, it just counts, you know, when you're actually kicking the ball. Um, and then it says I traveled 3.7 kilometers, and most of that was fetching the ball. Can we pause for a second and give a giant golf clap to my guy Alex for A, that accent, and B, those soccer skills. This is all done through the Gamer app, which of course is a great way to track your progress, but an even better way to keep improving with these fun challenges. It doesn't stop there though. What makes these challenges even cooler though, is you can then connect the app to FIFA Mobile. So you can then take those goals and challenges in real life and convert them to exclusive rewards, ways to build your team in the game. And again, it's this really unique way to combine both the physical and digital world together. So if you're into soccer, I mean football, definitely check out the Adidas Gamer and I'll drop a link to that down below. Someone's got to affiliate link these, all 50 products, so do you think you could help me out and make affiliate links for me? Definitely, I'm, I'm able to do that, yes sir. <laughs> Alright, so you, every affiliate link in this video will go to your affiliate link, is that cool with you? Yeah, for sure, that's really dope, thank you. So, everyone, support my man out. Everything in this video, if you guys want to pick up for yourself, for a friend, for a family member, it's going to help out my guy. Man, you got the acoustic foam and you're out doing me. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, sir. laughs> yeah. I have to um, fix it up. I have to, I plan on getting a bit more around here, but yeah. What microphone are you using? Um, the Deity D3 Pro. Amazing. Shout out to Deity. That's a good mic. I know. They sent it to me. It was awesome. It's like the best mic. It's my main mic. I don't use any other mic for anything now. What's your pick under 50? My pick would have to be the Seagate hard drive. This one is a five terabyte, but they, they have a one terabyte model that's 47 bucks. And it's a really good hard drive i use this to edit all my videos this one is 130 for the five terabytes but for the one terabyte it's pretty much the exact it's the exact same hard drive it's just a smaller storage it's actually saved me like a lot because one of my hard drives went out so i we got this to make sure i can still edit my videos because my macbook is only 128 gigs of storage so i needed something i need something to edit off of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you, bro. Like the the 128 gig life is rough. Right. Yeah. So this came in really clutch. It we got it and it worked like worked perfectly. So next, this is what I would call setup gains. Got a seven in one package to elevate your current setup. And the beautiful thing is these work great together or independently. Now you may not see it from here, but there's actually an M1 MacBook Air right behind this display. That's thanks in part to this vertical stand from Satachi. They make really great accessories. I also have their wireless mouse and wireless 10 key number pad, which makes a great extension if you have a keyboard that does not have that. Now, right next to that, I have surprise a wired keyboard because sometimes you just need a wired keyboard in your life. Sometimes Bluetooth can be a jerk, especially if you're trying to boot up into a particular partition. And if you don't mind that wire, this is a really clean option. Above that is this really cool, small compact desk lamp from Otlight. 
I like that it has touch controls so you can simply cycle through how bright or not bright you wanna have it. And really this is ideal for someone who needs to concentrate or be productive slash creative during the day because being in a dim environment will quickly destroy all of that. Now, if you're curious, what the heck are six and seven in this setup gain series? That's actually one of them right here in under desk outlet. Right next to that though, is something really helpful. It's an on desk headphone hook. Not sure if you wanna store your $550 AirPods Max on this, but if you wanted to, it is definitely strong enough. For real though, it's a great way to keep your desk clutter free and more importantly, a way to keep your headphones off the floor. From there is kind of a setup bonus. If you've been a mechanical drive kind of person all your life and you're looking to just maybe dip your toes into the flash life, this is a great inexpensive way to do that. This is also this really cool tiny compact option where it's almost this Swiss army knife because on one end you have USB-A, but it transforms ninja style into USB-C and it packs 256 gigs of storage. Now, if you've grabbed that HomePod mini or really any other smart speaker and you're looking to add some additional smart home elements in your life, I got you. One of the biggest complaints with Philips Hue and their smart bulbs is that to get into the game, you used to have to buy a hub, which not everybody wanted to do. Fortunately, nowadays, they have two cool options that don't need a hub. You have this fancy pants hipster Edison option or a simpler option here. And again, the best part about these is they're under 50 and you don't need a hub to control them. If you're deep in that Philips Hue life though, this is one of the coolest accessories I've seen. It's actually this little dimmer that goes on top of your existing outlet switch because there's nothing more annoying than setting up some smart home lights, flipping them off and then dealing with that nonsense. This does two things. It gives you dimming power, plus you're not gonna accidentally hit the switch you don't wanna hit. Next, this is for my HomeKit people out there. If you wanna say, plug your Christmas tree into an outlet and say, hey, turn off the Christmas tree, this is what you need. So next we got some cool stuff, some unique things that kind of really vibe with me. We're kicking it off with this AirPods Pro iPod Shuffle case from Spigen. And it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It allows you to store your AirPods Pro in a case that looks like an iPod Shuffle. Honestly, I would say it's more of an aesthetic kind of for fun thing. I wouldn't use it on the everyday basis, mainly because I'm not a huge fan of how the top part comes off. They do, however, make this, which weirdly enough has been my go-to favorite accessory this week. It definitely gives a little bit of the dad vibe where you're rocking a lanyard on your belt loop, but I'm not sure if I really care because with the original AirPods, that case just kind of slid right in real nicely, whereas the AirPods Pro, not so much, and this kind of perfectly solves that problem. Next, I can't think of a cooler piece of tech right now than a mask. And I've been legit excited looking for a new mask. This might be my favorite reusable right now. It's called the Halo Mask. And the reason I like it is because one, it's layered. You can insert a filter in here. You have adjustable ear loops, which is nice. But the coolest part about this, something you don't normally see on reusable masks is the adjustable nose tip. So that guy is nice and secure. It's not going anywhere and you got some Mortal Kombat Scorpion vibes. There's also the air mask from Spigen, which is a little simpler, there's no filter, but again, the point of a mask is not necessarily to protect yourself, it's to be empathetic and protect others, so this is better than nothing at all. It's lightweight, it slips right on, and it is super, super comfortable, and when you look at that, I can still talk, I can still breathe. Point is, whether you're wearing that mask or the sick LED mask with the cyberpunk LED glasses, or, you can even grab these sweet matte black masks. You can grab an entire box for under 50 bucks. Wear one, let's do our part, and let's get through this together. From there, this hoodie that I'm wearing right now is actually a bag, or it's a hoodie that transforms into a bag. So I get it, maybe you wanna rock the sweater around your waist, maybe you wanna have those Carlton vibes, that's fine, but if you're looking for an alternative, this actually transforms into a bag. So you can either store stuff in your hoodie-shaped bag or store your hoodie that turns into a bag into another bag. While we're on the apparel topic, this has been my everything. We call it the Homer into a bush, A plus. Next for my garden. Oh, the Tim Apple shirt? That's also under 50 bucks. I'll drop a link to that down below. But like I said, for my Guardians of the Galaxy fans, we got a Guardians Bluetooth speaker. I see you peeping group back there. That kind of pairs with this. Unfortunately, that's not under 50, but this is cool as hell. Breaking news, Groot moves, and it's also now under 50 bucks, link down below. Now recently, I finally made the switch to the iPhone 12 mini. 
jumped from the 11 Pro Max down to the 12 Mini. I've loved almost everything about it. And if you guys wanna see a video on that experience, drop a like down below. The only thing I haven't been crazy about though is the battery life. So these two have been my best friends. So I've really, really enjoyed the MagSafe charger. I wish you could get a detachable cable or it was a little bit longer, but for what it does, it works perfectly for me. Also, for those that have heard the song, it is finally available on Spotify and Apple Music, and I'll drop a link to that down below. And as we pivot, this little guy looks like the charger you normally wouldn't wanna use if you found one in your house. It's the Anchor PowerPort 3 Nano, and despite its size, this little boy pops out 20 watts of juice. An alternate side story, I've been using the M1 MacBook Pro pretty much as my main machine. This video that you're watching right now was exported on that laptop. In my video covering AirPods Max or my first impressions, that was also edited on the MacBook Pro. The problem was I was so deep in the zone I couldn't find a proper USB-C charger, so I used this to keep me afloat. And surprise, it actually did. So I think that's a combination of how impressive this is with how impressive the power draw on these new machines actually are. Now if you're like, hold up, what if I need more power? This one from Aoki just squeaks in a cent under 50 bucks, but delivers 100 watts of power with two USB-C ports. On the subject of power, this, the Rode Rockstar. Cheesy name, but it's a super cool product. Obviously one, first and foremost, it's a car charger, but the sauce is that A, you get four USB ports. It's a little older school in the sense that you're going USB-A, which is kind of weird to say, but the magic here is there's a breakout USB box that goes to the back of the car. So not only are you passing the aux, you're passing the power. From there, this is one of the coolest things I've come across lately. It is the Echo Gear outlet shelf. And like that name implies, it's intended for things like the Echo Plus, the Echo Dot. But as you may or may not be aware, there is a new small speaker that has entered the chat, the HomePod Mini, and this happens to work out perfectly for that as well. It's pretty simple. You just remove your old outlet plate, replace it with this that locks things in. There's built-in cable management, which is incredible. And again, while it does work perfectly for the HomePod Mini, it was intended for the Echo Dot, the Echo Plus, and you know it's gonna work with other small speakers as well. Next, Marquez, I got a gift for you. I've heard you've uh, been known to carry an iMac around to edit on. I get it. I love editing on a bigger screen, something with more power. A lot of us out there probably do that. So that's where this comes in. It's one thing if you're traveling with an iMac and you need that heavy duty artillery, the Pelican case, but if you're just throwing it in a car, this is a much simpler option. It's padded so you're getting protection pretty much everywhere you need it, and the bonus on top of everything is you have slots to throw things like your keyboard, mouse, and even some drives in there. Speaking of Pelican, if you get excited about organizational things, this thing is sick. You get all the protective awesomeness that you've come to expect with Pelican, but in a tiny compact package that makes a great accessory on your desk or in your bag. Now, if you don't need anything that intense, this is a great alternative from Platinum. I found this at Best Buy. And the cool thing here is you can grab this for under 30 bucks. So if you happen to be in the market for a pair of earbuds, I got a couple options for both my wired and wireless friends. On the wireless side, these are the Go Air True Wireless Earbuds from JLab, and they got so much going for them. They're affordable, which is obviously maybe the most important thing here. They're compact. I like that there's an integrated charging solution in the case. You get great battery life, there's customizable EQ, and to ice the cake, there are built-in touch controls. Now on the wired side of things, the T2 from Tin Hi-Fi, some would argue that in terms of audio quality, these would outperform something like AirPods Pro. You of course don't get the convenience of wireless and have to deal with a cable, but in terms of how they sound, they are incredible. You're not gonna need a crazy DAC or amp to push these, so you can grab them by themselves now, and then eventually if you do upgrade to something like a Dragonfly, it's only going to improve your experience. Now, 2020 has definitely been the year for me to jump back into guitar and music. And if you're looking to do something similar, these are a couple of my favorite guitar accessories under 50 bucks. First up is a humidifier, which is really important in terms of taking care of your guitar. I know it can be tempting to want to display them outside on a stand or on your wall, but if you can, ideally you want them in a case with a humidifier. The reason it's so important is the environment you keep your guitar in can either be too humid or actually not humid enough. Wood, as we know, can expand, it can crack, so this kind of keeps things at the perfect condition. The reason why this one's so cool is with a typical humidifier, you gotta mess with adding water and it can kind of get messy or just downright annoying. Whereas with this, you have a couple pouches that you slot into the respective containers. You put one near the headstock, one in the sound hole, and you are good to go. Now, I will admit I'm not the biggest fan of changing strings, but if you do, it makes the world of difference. 
My go-to strings are the Elixir Phosphor Bronze, and there's actually some tech going on here where the strings themselves, they're coated, so one, they last longer, they feel nice, and two, I think they carry a really distinct sound. They're definitely pricier than say a basic set of strings, but again, they last longer, they sound better, and when you pair them with a string winder and this headstock cutter, you got the perfect combo to change out the strings yourself. From there, I got two more, what I would say are essential accessories that you should grab if you don't have yet. The first is a guitar tuner, and I really do like the clip-on kind. They're simple, they're easy to use, they're convenient. From there, if you don't have a capo, you should absolutely grab one. They're super affordable, and more than anything, it adds an extra layer of fun to playing guitar. Now, as far as what the heck this thing actually does, in a basic explanation, what it does is changes the key of the song you're playing. So, for example, here's what something sounds like played open. versus playing that exact same thing with those same shapes capoed on the third fret. Also, fun fact, what you just heard was recorded on this TC30 USB-C microphone, which you guessed it also happens to come in under 50 bucks. Conversely, it also makes a great budget voiceover mic or for streaming, whatever you're looking to get into to get better audio. I really love the fact that it comes with A, a shock mount, B, a pop filter for those plosives, and it's a little bit funny because it does connect via USB-C, which is awesome, but it ships with a USB-C to A cable. So I got this going into the M1 MacBook Pro right now. Battery life is living on a prayer. I'm really pushing this to the limit right now. But because of that cable, I ended up having to put it through this Anchor USB-C hub, which gives me USB-A back. I like this one a lot because you get USB-C pass-through for power, two USB-A ports, an extra USB-C port for data, card slots, and HDMI. The only thing worth mentioning with this hub is speaking of that HDMI port, it does not do 4K 60 hertz, but aside from that, it is a fantastic value just like this mic. Now I know what you're thinking, how was that MacBook that I saw moments ago that shiny and clean? Enter this, which is primarily a screen cleaner, it's alcohol free, which is super important, but it also doubles as a great electronics cleaner as well. Now if guitar isn't your thing and you're more looking to jump into the production MIDI kind of recording side of things, I found this, the MIDI Plus AKM320, which really surprised me for the price. It's built extremely well and what's really nice is that it's USB powered so you don't gotta deal with any clunky power adapters and I think I should probably send this to my guy, Henny the Business, at some point. So first up on this list is the Sega Genesis Mini, which is near and dear to my heart. I'm essentially a part Sega, part Sony boy. True story, many years ago, my brother and I got an NES and ended up fighting over Duck Hunt, so my mom was like, nah fam, that's going back to Toys R Us. After a harsh lesson learned, we eventually got a hold of a Sega Genesis and fast forward to Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Echo the Dolphin, Toe Jam and Earl. That was essentially our childhood. Those are all on this Sega Genesis Mini, and apart from a couple of my personal favorites, Lion King, Aladdin, Toy Story, Damn You Disney and Pixar, this packs a really solid lineup and is a great way to either revisit some of that nostalgia or just jump in for the first time. Next, for the many out there who managed to grab a PS5 controller and not a PS5, I don't have a PS5 for you, but I do got this sweet wall stand. This of course will work not only with the PS5 controller, but maybe your Team Xbox or Team Switch. This makes a great accessory to grab. Speaking of Team Switch, if you're on the thick side of things and that light life ain't for you, but you envy that D-pad, this is what you need. It's Super Mario themed, which is a on top, but in its basic form, it's a left Joy-Con that you can buy by itself that adds a D-pad. Alternatively, if you've been looking to jump into the controller world but don't want to spend pro controller kinds of cash, the 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro Plus is a great alternative. It's super comfortable, the build quality is fantastic, it packs USB-C, I'm looking at you Tim Cook, and to ice the cake, it also works on Windows, Mac, and Android. Now this one is a super cool option for the diehard Nintendo fans out there, behold the Game & Watch. Next, for the sus people in your life, we all got them. Hit him with these. Now on the PC Master Race side of things, it's been a rough one this year because anything cool you cannot buy right now. 
If you did, however, jump into the gaming side of things and wanted to scoop up a gaming mouse that won't break the bank, the Death Adder by Razer is a fantastic option, and this white edition is super clean. So that kind of wraps things up. I'm gonna close this video out with a random Ed Sheeran riff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later.